before this series, the Mets hadn't won against the Cubs here at home in four years. Now they've beaten them twice in 48 hours. Welcome to Mets All Access, I'm Mike Janela. And the best pitcher on this or any other planet takes the mound tonight. It's the Grom Day here at City Field. Jacob's got the lowest ERA and whip through 10 starts in MLB history. The record for best ERA plus in a full season is 291. He's at 686. And Jake's reached 100 strikeouts this season faster than anyone since 1893. They didn't even have cell phones back then. Should be a fun night with Jake on the mound. Here's what's on tap for our show. We're going to break down last night's incredible ninth inning play at the plate from all stats and angles in tonight's Baseball 201. Jacob DeGrom still got a lot of road left ahead in his career, but he's already well represented in the Mets Hall of Fame and Museum. We'll take a trip there. And we've got our social question of the day. Looking to hear from you live on the show. We'll also check out the Mets minor league report and play the latest round of blind resumes. But right now, it's time to know your foe. Here are three things to know about the Cubs as the Mets look to clinch the series tonight. Well, I hope you like nail biters because these two teams have played the most one run games in the majors this year, like they did last night. And they're shockingly close in records. Cubs are 13 and 11 in those games. The Mets are now 14 and 10. All of the Cubs offense last night in the 3-2 game came off the bat of Javi Baez. Forget three true outcomes. This guy is a two true outcome player. Homers and strikeouts. That's what Javi Baez does. Those 15 dingers are tied for fifth in the National League, but against the 88 Ks, he's only walked seven times all year, good for just a 270 OBP. And while the Mets have to feel confident with Jacob DeGrom on the mound, Anthony Rizzo's actually had some pretty good success against Jake in his career. How the franchise linchpin for the Cubs does in the box tonight could be a main reason for Chicago's success. That being said, Anthony Rizzo and the Cubs have yet to take on this Super Saiyan version of Jacob DeGrom yet this year, so tonight could be a different story. All right, so now you know your foe. Let's see how well you know your own. It's time to play Blind Resumes. We pick out a memorable Mets season, see if you can figure out the player based just on the stats. Then we'll have one lucky fan try and guess right here live on the show. First, let's meet the mystery man. 1996, I was awkward and pimple-faced, and this guy was leading all of Major League Baseball in plate appearances, triples, and hits, too, with 227 of them. He made the All-Star game that year for the first and only time in his career, and he also stole 50 bases that season. What else didn't he do? Talk about a good Mets debut. Let's take a look at the debut of our contestant right now on the show. We've got Craig, originally from Bayside, Queens. Craig, can you make Queens proud? Who do you think that blind resume belongs to? Lance Johnson. Lance Johnson, I think, is a pretty good guess. Let's take a look and see if he's right. It is Lance Johnson. Craig, you know your stuff. And for getting Lance Johnson on our blind resume game, you're taking home this Mets t-shirt. Congratulations. Wear with pride, man. You earned it. Yeah, that guy, Lance Johnson, he was a hit machine for a couple years there in the middle of his career. And continuing our trend from this series, he also played for the Cubs, went there after he played for the Mets, spent two years on the north side, and he spent eight years actually on the south side of Chicago playing for the White Sox. Pretty solid career for Lance, especially with the bulk of it in the Windy City, but the Mets were his best seasons by far. Unfortunately, the Mets did not make the postseason in either of Lance Johnson's two years here in Queens. But while the Cubs are on our mind and in town, it certainly takes us back to 2015 when the Mets not only made the postseason, but won the pennant. And that takes us right to our social question of the day. Take a look. What was your favorite moment from the 2015 playoff run in which, not that I need to remind you, the Mets swept the Cubs in the NLCS? Tweet us your answer using hashtag Mets pregame, and we'll check out some of your memories a little later in the show. While you send us those, let's take a look at what happened on this date in Mets history.
The Mets and Yankees played in a regular season game for the first time ever on this day in 1997. The Amazons kicked off the first season of the Subway Series with a 6-0 win across town, led by Dave Malicki's complete game shutout of the Bronx Bombers. First Subway Series of this year, by the way, mark your calendar, July 4th weekend at Yankee Stadium. Then the Yanks and Mets do it again right here at City Field on the 20th anniversary weekend of September 11th. That is going to be something. We want to remind you about our social question of the day. Use hashtag Mets pregame on Twitter to tell us your favorite moment, your favorite memory from the 2015 postseason, and we'll share your answers here in just a couple minutes. So get that Twitter app up and running. But right now, it's time for our nightly lesson in advanced stats. It's Baseball 201. Today, we're breaking down one of the absolute gold star plays of the Mets season so far. Last night's game-saving Pilar to Guillorme to McCann play at the plate. Let me set the stage, and then we'll jump in. Top of the ninth last night, 3-2 game, Seth Lugo on the mound trying to close it out for the Mets. Jake Marisnik's on first, Eric Sogard's at the plate. Let's fire up the visual aids and take a look. All right, so Sogard takes this 2-2 pitch to right center, and with a speedy Marisnik, it's trouble off the bat. Kevin Pillar had to race almost 120 feet to cut that ball off. He had an average speed of 17 and a half miles an hour to get there. You see the end result there, but you know that's how the critical play started. Let's check it out from another angle, because like I said, Marisnik, he's got some wheels. He made it from first to home in just a blink under 10 and a half seconds. Think about all that has to happen in that amount of time. Pilar trucking over, the relay throw, the tag getting applied without a hitch, all in just 10 seconds. But now let's focus on that relay throw because that was the most brilliant piece of the puzzle. Luis Guillorme had never thrown a ball faster than 80 miles an hour in his big league career. And on that play, he tossed a bean 85 miles an hour to the plate on a dime. Marisnik was meat. And something else to note on that play, look at how quickly Luis Guillorme made the exchange. He took just six tenths of a second to transfer the ball from glove to throw. Incredible. Add it all together and you've got a game-saving play, a galvanizing moment for this team, and one of the quintessential highlights of this new look Mets defense this year. Also, it was awesome. That's basically what it all comes down to and all of us are going to remember seeing that play last night for a very long time. That wraps up Baseball 201, but doesn't wrap up some more stuff for you to take a look at because now it's time for our amazing offer of the series. Check it out. This whole week against the Cubs, get 20% off all adjustable caps. Offer applies to regularly priced adjustable caps, does not include snapbacks, but brands and styles include New Era, 47, men's, women's, and youth. Go get yours at every Mets team store tonight. Then after you stop by a team store, why not grab something to eat? Tons of delicious options here at the park for food, and I got to go check out a very special one tonight. Let's eat. I'm here at Taste of the City and James Beard Award winner Danny Meyer and his Union Square Hospitality Group, they've done it again. It's box frites, which are the best French fries you're going to find anywhere. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineup. Look at these. I wish you could smell these right now. These are the garlic frites with Parmesan and parsley. Here in the middle, you got your bacon cheddar dog. You can also get some bacon and cheese frites if that's what you're feeling tonight. And then hitting in the three spot, we have our crispy chicken poppers and frites combo, but then you gotta get the house-made sauces if you're coming to Box Frites. Let me introduce you to this all-star team. We've got Chipotle barbecue, we've got honey mustard, we've got the cheese sauce, and then some Parmesan ranch. Where to begin? Well, it's Box Frites, right? So I gotta at least have one fry right now. I'm gonna go with my favorite, the Chipotle barbecue. It's fantastic. And then this thing I'm taking home with me. So make sure you get your hands on some frites, some dogs, whatever, but this is a place to do it. Danny Meyer, you did it again.
I know mom taught me never to talk with my mouth full, but hey, it's part of the job. So stop by Box for Eats located here at Taste of the City on field level behind center field. And don't forget to follow and tag at Amazing Mets Food on Instagram for all of City Field's best eats. Let's look ahead on the calendar now. Here's what's coming to City Field. June 25th, the Mets celebrate Pride Night. Phillies are in town for a doubleheader that Friday, first pitch of game one at 410. And we hope to see you all right here with us with this great t-shirt available for those who come out to City that night. Check out Mets.com slash tickets. Somebody we hope to see at City Field even before that, Jeff McNeil. He's getting close and he kicks off tonight's Mets Minor League Report. Rehabbing off that IL stint. Jeff went one for four last night for Syracuse, but more importantly, played five innings in the field in the second game of his rehab assignment. Should be back with the Mets, maybe even by this weekend. For Binghamton, Mark Vientos keeps driving in runs with another ribby last night. He's now at a clip of more than a run driven in per game over his last five. That bat's heating up. And JT Ginn has been the tonic for that pitching staff in St. Lucie. A 0.82 ERA in three starts this season after giving up just a hit in four innings yesterday. That's some Jacob DeGrom type numbers from JT. And there's your Mets minor league report. Well, somewhere all those guys hope to end up one day is the Mets Hall of Fame and Museum, and not just as visitors. One guy who's already in there, the man you'll see on the hill tonight, Jacob DeGrom. Now, he left some of his hardware behind there, so I went to go take a look. Know what belongs in a museum? This. I'm standing in front of a case holding Jacob deGrom's 2018 Cy Young Award and a Jacob deGrom jersey from that season. It was the first of back-to-back -back Cy Youngs for Jake and one of the greatest pitching seasons in Mets history. He led the majors with a 1-7-0 ERA, struck out 269 batters in 217 innings, and earned 29 of the 30 first place votes for the Cy Young. Not bad for an old college shortstop drafted in the ninth round. So go check out the Mets Hall of Fame and Museum here, maybe before Jacob DeGrom adds a third Cy Young to his collection, and then visit the Mets Virtual Vault anytime. Lots of cool stuff there by visiting MetsHeritage.com. Okay, before we wrap up, let's see your answers to our social question of the day. We asked for your favorite memory from the 2015 Mets postseason run. Let's see what you said. Tracy says, Daniel Murphy everything. Yeah, when didn't that guy hit a home run in that postseason run? Incredible what Murph did. Steven says, Familia striking out Fowler to sweep and win the series. Yeah, against these Cubs, that was an incredible series for the Mets. Cubs, don't forget, were heavily favored that series, and the Mets took them behind the woodshed. AJ says, David Wright's World Series home run, and AJ was here at City Field to witness it. AJ, I'm very jealous. I'm sure a lot of people here at this ballpark are as well. A memory David will treasure forever, and you too. Adam says that it was when every single person at City Field was screaming Harvey at Game 5 of the World Series. Yeah, we saw Matt Harvey make his return here to City Field pitching against the Mets earlier this year, but talk about memories. He gave us a lot as a Met throughout that 2015 run. And then Jake says, Daniel Murphy against the Dodgers in game five, electric in all caps. It's exactly what Daniel Murphy was. Uh, if you'll allow me a moment to indulge, I was here, brought my dad to his first ever Mets playoff game the night that Daniel Murphy took Jake Arietta deep here against the Cubs at City Field. We were freezing, but man, it was worth it. Hey, keep your answers coming because we want to hear even more. Tweet us using hashtag Mets pregame. More answers coming up soon. One last thing before you go, don't forget you can now order food and drinks right from your phone. Use the MLB Ballpark app to order meals and pick them up at designated concessions locations throughout the park. You can even order merchandise and pick it up at the Jersey Customization Station located behind home plate on field level. Game three of this four game series coming right up. We've got Mets and Cubs moments away. The Mets looking to take this series with Jacob DeGrom leading the way. To break it down even more, Emily Reffert's back next with the Mets on Deck show brought to you by DraftKings. For Mets All Access, I'm Mike Janella. See you soon, and let's go Mets!